G'day, welcome back to Project Brewpeg, the story of a sunken fishing trawler converting to a global expedition and research boat. This week it's all about connecting the engine through to the wheelhouse. We've got our internal wall put together, our conduit's been run, it's time for Morse cables to go in to link the gearbox and engine through to the controls up in the wheelhouse. We started these cables a couple of weeks ago and we've been working on the stabilizers in between them when Stu came up from Dangar Marine. However, now that our Morse cables have arrived, we can go back to working on the engine and get that ready to go. But before any of that, Dame needed to cut out hatches for easy access to the bilge before the main wall went in. Dame realised it was too hot and messy to finish cutting the boards downstairs so we opened the hatch and pulled the boards out and Dame finished cutting them on the ground outside. I now get to find 18 months worth of tools that have fallen under these floorboards because I haven't taken them up for that long. It's going to be a um, bit of a mystery surprise when I pull these up. Oh, it's not bad. Bit of rubbish. Apart from that, it's pretty good. Screwdriver. Oh, it's pretty tidy. Yeah, no, there's not much in there, are you? Right. <laughs> I don't quite know how I'm going to get this one out. I'll come down there and put it down. Okay. Lovely. Lovely. So I'm pretty chuffed about this. It's been 18 months since we've seen under these floorboards and there's next to nothing. There's water because we've had some water spills. I changed some filters in here that dumped about 30 litres of water through this bilge. But you can kind of see the whole thing, it's drained out pretty well. There's a couple of little areas that we might just need to just give a wee bit of attention to but a year and a half and never looking at this the design worked pretty well Trevor had this in the bottom of his boat um, <laughs> as you do <laughs> from the previous owner and he's donated it to Brewpeg because it's a yeah. lovely mooring rope Brilliant. too big for his boat, perfect for our boat thanks Trev cheers buddy so this morning we're moving these panels Four panels downstairs because Dave's going to cut these on the ground because it's just too dusty and smelly and hot to do it in the downstairs room. I need rope. Yeah. The morning rope too much for you? <laughs> Hiding. I don't wanna in a fight. Yeah, yeah. So if you're coming close, 
boards down. We'll go through now and start cutting out these um, white marked out areas. We'll probably lay them out each, like one at a time and just do each one at a time and then we'll start going through with the edges and epoxy them all. Going down, isn't it? So I'm just down at the truck waiting for Dame to take apart a bunk bed that we've just brought second hand. We're on our way to the dentist in Brisbane, first time for me to the dentist for about 10 years. <laughs> um, but just yeah, I wanted to show you, it's so gorgeous. I'm really lucky. This is the coastline in Queensland. And it was Dame's birthday. I dragged him away from the boat for the morning and he wanted to have brunch and then roll me in the four-wheel drive wheelchair around this amazing area in Queensland coastline. After Dame finished epoxying the last bits of the wall, he installed it for the last time. Now that the wall's sort of screwed down, we need to focus on getting this conduit in. Now you can sort of see we've got one at the front done, doing the bend up to the left of the screen, and then we've got another one that's just randomly dangling out into space, and that's doing the back end, and then that front one that I first mentioned is kind of curved off. Essentially what this means is both conduits don't fit at the same time, so we have to cut it in the middle. So we've got some joiners, we're gonna basically cut them, fit each part, and then join them in the middle. I was hoping it wasn't going to have to be cut. Um, my goal was to have one piece of conduit that went right from the engine room all the way up to the controls. It's not going to be the case. It's actually going to end up being three pieces, but because of the joiners, because of how tight the, the tolerances are and how, when it joins, how, you know, how it all works together as well as it does, the conduit is going to essentially become one piece of conduit as far as the cables are concerned. So should one of them break, we'll be able to just literally pull it out and grab a new cable and feed it all the way through and it'll guide itself from an engine bay right through up into the control area. Let me show you what we're doing. So, we have the two pipes coming down, and then they start to diverge. This one is complete, and you can see it flows through. It's the top pipe, goes all the way down the back, exactly where we want it to go. Now the bottom pipe matches it, but as soon as you come forward here, it doesn't. So, we've put a cut, we've put one of our PVC joiners. Let me show you what they like. So this is a joiner. It's basically a hollow tube. It's got a little ridge right in the middle, so that when you push the two pipes together, like this, the little ridge sits halfway along and it stops the pipes from overlapping or doing anything silly, it just provides a hard stop. So with that, we can then trim this one on our line, so when I push that up, it's roughly where it needs to go. We'll trim it on our line, and then we'll push it inside this one here. I have to figure out how we're gonna get it in, but we'll push it in there, and that will form our two single piece conduits. So we'll be able to push a cable all the way through here, it won't even notice this join, and it'll just carry on in a nice big sweeping arc all the way forward.
Trev's popped over and we're just having a go. We've got a 90 degree bend that is too bent. So we need to straighten it out a little bit. We can bend the Morse cables to the same radius and it works fine. Um, there's no restrictions or issues with the actual cable going that tight. But we can't get the cable through the orange um, pipe because at the start of each Morse cable there's a piece of stainless, solid stainless, that's about, I don't know, six inches long or so. And as such we can't physically feed that straight piece through the bent orange piece. So we're going to straighten the orange piece out. We don't need it this tight. We're going to straighten it out a bit so that we can feed through the solid stainless rod at the start of each Morse cable. Yeah, that'll do. Let's see if we can get it through there. So at each end of the Morse cable, you've got two different lengths of stainless rod. So obviously this being the short one, and this is your long one here. There's a little ball joint in here, so there's a wee bit of flex available, just not enough to get it through the 90 degrees. This one here has the ball joint here, so you've only got sort of five inches or so, you know, of flex available. However, that is enough. So we've straightened out, that was 90 degrees. We'll use the hairdryer and straighten that out. And it's enough to be able to get that through. A wee bit tight, but we can push that through, and we know that we're able to um, control the morse. We push that in and out without any drama. And we, if we need to, we can even go a little bit tighter. So, problem solved, that's how we're getting up through the bulkhead. I think I know how we can solve this, right? So at the moment we've got a whole 25 mil hole top and bottom. If we do a 25 top and bottom beside it, and then link it, we're gonna have four, and like a sort of a square hole of radius. We'll be able to just feed this through each one, and it means that we'll have like a, an elongated hole that, that high to get that through. But we're gonna need, because if, if this is the, yeah, then that's going to sit out there, so you need a hole from sort of there to there, 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 don't you? Yeah, right. You know, so that's the hole. You'll be hungry. Yeah. yeah. Alright. So it's going to have to be longer than what we've got up there, isn't it? Yeah, well, does that make sense? Can you measure that hole no, no, there? Get, yeah, no, I get you. 60 mil would get away just, but 70 would be comfortable. Right. If you're wondering why it is a challenge, for us speaking in the freezer room, it's because of this. The Hairdryer 3000, the vacuum extraordinaire, the expulsion emulsion. It's all those things, but it's pretty good at making cold air come into the freezer room. Yep, that's about roughly in line. Let me go down more. So particular about things. Oh, I like things to be as accurate as I can get them. One. Ah, ah, ah. Okay. Well, it was way easier than I thought. I have adjustment stick. Good, yeah, right there. Yeah. Okay, all right, well let's conjure it all the way through. So the day's finished, we're both pretty tired. What we did manage to get done, let me show you. We have conduit coming from the kitchen bulkhead up here, or the galley if you're pedantic, going all the way through with two joiners midway through here, and then they flow on right the way down to the bulkhead for the engine room. So tomorrow's job, we'll go and get the conduit from uh, the orange pieces of um, bend that we made today. We'll get the conduit going from there all the way up to the top um, where the controls are for the bridge. And then we'll start running the cables the right way through so that we can get uh, connected onto our engine and gearbox. We're on the home stretch. What we need to do, take the air conditioner off the wall because we have to drill a hole through this bulkhead uh, that goes between the kitchen and the uh, wheelhouse or the galley in the wheelhouse. And we need to basically feed our cables through that hole. So rather than run conduit through the hole, which is gonna present a few challenges and so on at that end, we're gonna stop the conduit pretty much at the hole and then we'll be able to feed it down because we can, as soon as we take the um, control box off on the wheelhouse end, we can see directly where this hole is gonna be. That'll make sense in a second when I show you once we've done it. So the plan today 
is pull this air conditioner down and then get stuck in. We may have to move the hydraulic pipes, but God, I'm hoping we don't because they're a pain in the neck if we have to. Our model of air conditioner um, comes with safety rope and duct tape to hold it together. So in the wheelhouse, this is the box that our control cables sit in. So you can see right down the bottom there, there's a little bit of a hole basically between some plywood and you can sort of see there's some thinner plywood there we have to drill through. So what I need to do is basically figure out exactly where that sits, that piece of plywood gap down the bottom on the steel on the other side, because so we've got to drill it from the other side. So complex measuring time to make sure I get it right. Five. Done. Every boat has that one pipe or one piece of wire or one bolt that is just a nightmare to get to. Let me introduce you to Brewpeg's version. This is the what's called the Orbitrol. It's the, basically it's a essentially it's a hydraulic distribution valve that the steering uses. So the steering wheel is connected to the other end of this gadget here. There's four pipes that come off. This pipe here is right in the way of where we need to drill. So we need to basically, that's a square that's available. We need to drill a hole sort of basically through the center of that. However, that pipe is the hardest possible pipe to get off on Brewpeg's case. So you can see over the back here, the, let me see if I can raise it, the nut over the back there. Whoops, let me zoom in so that it actually works. There we go. You can see over the back the nut there. That's really, really difficult to get to because um, you've got all of these three others that basically block up all of your movement. So it's one of those ones that you can do an eighth of a turn and then you spin your spanner and then you do an eighth and then you spin your spanner. It's, yeah, fun pipe work. With the two hole saws cut, we are basically got to take these little shoulders off, so the little angled bits, because they're going to cause chaos and trouble. So we've got a saber saw, put a new metal blade into it. Um, so these are sort of bi-metal blades, I think, from memory they are. But we're just going to whip off the, the little edges. <laughs> right? <laughs> the hot metal dance. What happened? Uh, nothing. <laughs> this is Jess's editing station. So she's got her Mac mount that we built a while back. And what are you working on? Uh, it's throttle three. Oh, nice. Yeah. We've cut out two lengths of conduit. So these, these pieces of conduit are going between that hole that we've just cut and the bottom down here where we've got our two orange pieces coming out of the room downstairs. So what the plan is, we're going to start putting them in so that we can figure out where we actually have to bend them because they have to move sideways about 400 mil. This is, this is Trev's mandrel bending technique. <laughs> this is what you use for performance exhausts because it gets you an even curve all the way through the bend. You've got to use the right knee. Left knee doesn't work, obviously it has to be the right knee. This is an oh and s approved. The EPA, this, this is EPA, OH and S and um, HSV approved uh, bending technique used only in Australia obviously. In Queensland, Australia. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're banging the wall. Mm. Putting the cold water on it basically just keeps it. I can see them, but yeah. That's only because you got good eyesight. <laughs> right? Yep, fine there. Oh. You be there? Yes. 
going to be so beautiful, it's not funny. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Beautiful. This is getting replaced because it's so awesome. You want to take a photo of it before you replace it. I'm just putting in the adjustable, um, the adjustable uh, ear setting height machine bit. Because see, with this you can adjust this. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. I, hope, I hope you don't see that. They want to. Oh, this is a custom modification I've made. Yeah. They will want to copy that. Yep. All done. We've got a red and a black cable. We need to figure out which one goes where, because one's the red is 24 feet long and the black is 27. The gearbox is further back than the engine, obviously, so the black one is our gears, red is our engine. We just have to make sure that we put the right cable on the right side so that we're um, lining the correct length up with the correct lever on our, um, our throttle control system. The challenge we had with Brewpeg, originally she was powered by Morse cables from the wheelhouse down into the engine room. The issue that we had is because we changed the layout, we thought that we'd put too many curves and bends into the system and we could never do it with cables again. So that's why we were looking at electric throttle. We came up with a pretty simple and robust system. In its simplest sense, it's literally this. You've got your throttle controls up the top. You've got a, in here, let me zoom in, you can sort of see there, there's a little gadget, it's a servo tester. Basically, it's just essentially, you could think of that as a position sensor. Cables down to a servo. So as I move, if it was plugged in, as I move this lever forward and back, this servo here would rock back and forth. So that was gonna be our system. Now, this is built with radio controlled car parts. So a lot of people would be nervous about having that sort of thing on the boat like this. The way that we were gonna do that is build in um, between two and four layers of redundancy. So we were gonna have two duplicate systems running at any one time. So if the first died, automatically the second one's already running. So an alarm would go so we know that system one is down, but system two is already taking over. So there was essentially no way that the system could die. The other side of it is that everything was interchangeable. So all the servos were the same. They all had the same plugs. All the power supplies were the same. We had two independent power supplies. Um, every, every component was basically interchangeable. Now what that gave us was the ability to have um, a small stockpile of parts that could maintain a large range of systems. It was also very cheap. We looked at buying one of these off the shelf. Um, they were black box equipment, so it was really difficult to be able to repair. If it, anything went wrong, we couldn't repair it at sea. Whereas because this system was so simple and so robust and had so much reliability, we were able to repair it really easily and keep a decent amount of parts. Plus the system cost less than 500 bucks to build. Um, we never got to the stage of building it, but we did prove the concept and test it with some cheap parts. We bought some you know, $2 servo testers off eBay and some $7 servos and everything. And we had the system up and running. Um, and then the plan was always to buy the highest quality stuff that we could, which again is not that expensive. You know, A metal geared um, underwater capable servo that had 30 kgs of thrust, that was only, I think we paid $35 for it. So, I mean, you're still not talking big dollars for a lot of this stuff. And that allowed us to have multiple systems running simultaneously because the cost was so low. This gives you an idea. When you operate a lever on these control boxes forward and back, they're basically tipping an arm like so. You can see here, we've built a couple of control rods for our test system onto a servo tester. So as we move the lever back and forth, we're moving that servo tester back and forth as well. So that was telling an electronic signal basically sending it down to the engine room to say move a servo in a certain way so it obviously passed through a cable and then as we move that the servo would just rock over to suit wherever it needed to go Trev's just brought up a really good point. With Morse cables, you don't require electricity. With the old system, with the electric fly-by-wire, we do need electricity. So we'd have to build in redundancy around battery banks and things like that. So um, with this, essentially this system that we're using with Morse cables is tried and true technology. It's been around for, you know, 100, maybe more years, um, and it's pretty robust. The cables don't often fail all at once. They start to die slowly, so they start getting stiff and sometimes even noisy, things like that. So you, you do get some warning that something's gonna happen and gives you a chance to change it. Electrics, not so much. Um, yeah, they normally die and they die at three o'clock in the morning when you're pulling into a marina and you really don't need them to. Okay. We're in. Before you're too busy. Okay.
So Trent's just checked and it's actually through the um, curved conduit, the bit that we thought was going to be the hardest. Made it through without even blinking, but it's jammed up somewhere else, so we think it's down in the freezer room side that's causing issues. I think I got carried away. He undid the conduit and I pushed about half a metre of it through. <laughs> we can't talk to each other, so I'm pushing it, he's pushing it back. <laughs> That's why we want to conduit all the way down so that we can basically push it from one end right the way through to the other without too much drama. Apart from it being stuck right now. I think Trev's probably at the bulkhead of the engine bay in the freezer room. Started so guiding it through that slot that we had to get it through. Time for red. Whatever you did there worked. What I'm doing is this is the end of the Morse cable here and I'm connecting it into the little control arm rod. So this is the control arm rod that attaches to this lever over the back. So if I move that lever, it's going to move the Morse cable up and down. Obviously the, everything's just moving as randomly at the moment, but that there is essentially what holds the Morse cable in to the throttle control. So you got this, uh, I'm assuming bronze or brass, probably bronze um, fitting. And then you've got a locking nut here, which basically jams the rod onto that fitting there. So we got that one on. Just need to do this one now. <laughs> Hard to find now. Yeah. So I heard them yeah, tickle tickle yeah, yeah. all the way down. Oh the I line. know where they'll be. On the bottom. Yeah. Right. These little tags, you can sort of see that, they have got a little notch in them. You can see it's pressed in on that side and it sort of dimples through on that side there. They fit into a notch on the cables themselves, so we have to push the cable down. So in order to figure out how we need to set up the levers in the wheelhouse, we have to know how we're going to do the cables down in the engine room. So specifically the gearbox, let me show you what I'm thinking. So in the engine room you've got the black Morse cable that comes down and then it connects down onto this lever here. So forward is obviously for forward and then a stern is there. Now we've got a splined shaft on here with a little bolt type clamp here. So this here can be spun around 90 degrees so it's sort of up and down would do the gears rather than forward to back. But we just have to figure out what we're going to do here. So what I'll do is I'll move this here pointing directly forward, 90 degrees forward and if we put it in ahead, so put it in forward gear, the lever's going to go down, so about 45 degrees down, and then if we put it into reverse, it's going to go neutral, and then reverse is 45 degrees up. So this this cable here will make a bracket based off something around this end of the gearbox here, and it'll just be a push-pull type arrangement here. We just realised that because we're pushing forward and pulling a stern, we've got this hooked up the wrong way around so we need to take the pin off the off let me show you that so this bit here this pin here you need to take that off and move it up into the top lever up there much smoother a bit manky before mm -hmm. it's probably going to work Okay, that one's a bit tight. Just on that last bit. I wonder what that's about. 
We realized that the throttle cable is a bit sticky, so we're making a few modifications on the throttle side of our control box so that we can free that one up. So That's happy? Fine. Yeah, happy now. Happy year. Take this guy in there. Once you've done it three or four times, it's easy. Experience, see? Eh? Yeah. <laughs> I've fitted a throttle several times. This. Yeah. The same throttle. Yeah. <laughs> same boat, same throttle. <laughs> first, <laughs> first three times were, were me fixing my mistakes. And it's not working yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've stuff at the other end there. Not much. There's a little bit of stuff at the other end. But I think it's. Oh, I know what it is. Because I feel like feel that. Just gently going there, then right there, you can feel it grinding on something. Oh, it's yeah. Metal on metal. Yeah. I reckon it's up in this box. So we can just light that without the cable on. Don't know. No. Alright, we're done at this end for a while, I think. We're gonna make some brackets. Let's go down the engine bay where it's hot. It's a bit cold up here with the air conditioning. We have to measure how much throw we've got. So when the levers are pushed fully forward and fully back, how much is this moving in and out? Because that determines where on this lever here, we have to mount it how far up and down the lever we're mounting it. So Trev's up there at the moment. What I need to work out is we've got 68 mil of throw on the cable itself, on the Morse cable. So come a bit of margin of error, we'll go down to 60. So we've got 30 mil either side from center. So we've got two holes here and I need to figure out which one we have to use in order to be able to line the cable up so that we're going to have maximum extension and contraction. So if I sit that at 100 mil, right, so that comes down to 70, so that's 30 mil. Okay, so this hole here is the one that we have to use. If I go that one there, I won't get full forward and reverse, but if I go on that one there, I will get full forward and reverse. That one there will be easier to push and pull but doesn't travel far enough, whereas this one is bang on. So that's our hole. So with the gearbox and the throttle, we need to connect the cable itself to the lever. So you do that with these little gadget things, and you just get them out of the packet. So it's basically like a, um, a ball, ball joint, so it can swivel freely, um, and the, it's threaded at one end, so that the the thread on the cable itself goes in there like that and then you use that nut to lock it on and then this here has a quick release that you can take the ball in and out like that so it's a pretty simple system to get the cables on and off the gears or the throttle okay it's on there tight for now Let's go 100 mil just to be safe, and we need to go. Uh, call it 101. You could get away with 100, but 120. 60 mil difference between there and there. 30 mil. Yeah, 30 mil. Probably. All right. Let's go out where it's some um, 15 degrees colder and we can start making some steel. It's easier to build out aluminium than steel, so we're going to modify a bracket rather than tack and add and do a whole bunch of stuff to the steel bracket that we had there. We're basically going to make it out of aluminium um, and because we need a completely different layout, we're going to modify it so that it's one weld, one easy bracket to build. So that is our point of truth. 
We gotta go. 30 mil. 120. 120, you said we'll make it just right. Still a fancy shape. Yes, we need a 120 width. Yep. Right, so now we just need to weld those two like that, don't we? And then clean them up and round the edges off and stuff. Very good. Could be bang on. Mm. It's probably close enough. That alignment and that alignment and we're good. Have that sit. And that's loose, does that sort of sit alright? Oh yeah, that's alright, that's clear. It's not too tight on the hard. Probably more line on my knee fighter. Is that right? So sort of, it's it's got a little bit of this moment. All oh, right. Uh, well, we can fix that with a bracket. We could weld a thing onto it. Is it moving like that when it's when the gears well, are on? Well, they can't shift it. Right, so this is moving a bit. Okay, let's put a bracket down this back end so I think just stiffen that up. We managed to get the um, cable for the gearbox installed fully so we can control the gearbox into forward and reverse from the wheelhouse now. Nice and easy, lovely and smooth. The plan tomorrow, we're going to be carrying on. We've got the old bracket from our electric setup. That goes onto the fuel pump on the engine. So we're going to be making another bracket so that we can uh, essentially bolt the cable uh, to the engine and start controlling that. I'll show you where we've got to on that for now. We're almost there, but we ran out of time today. So we've got the cable connected to our throttle. So that's our throttle movement there. Not a huge amount on this motor, um, but we need to basically build a bracket so that I can show you that. Just there is where the, the little clip um, clips onto these cables. So we have to build a bracket that sort of comes up around this height here so that we can clamp it up. Um, we, the original bracket came in here to these bolts here, so we we'll probably won't use those. We'll probably come off the front end somewhere and then come up and over um, just with a bit of alloy or something like that and we'll clamp that on. Once we've got that accelerator cable bolted to the engine, it means we can control the engine and gearbox from the wheelhouse. The last couple of jobs left to do, reinstall the last uh, pieces of wall that um, we haven't put into the freezer room there, reassemble the wall panels if we get time to, and then put all the beds back out so that we can get some more accommodation for our volunteers. You got ice like summer sky If it's my good kill I die And now it starts to rain So let's enjoy it